Good afternoon. Hey, I'd like to welcome you all to the 29th DEM I Wonder webinar. DEM has so many services, offerings, programs, and hidden gems that we want to share with all of you. So we're excited to take just a few minutes each week to highlight some of these features in our weekly webinar. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many exercises have been postponed or canceled. The Utah Division of Emergency Management is hosting this weekly webinar series aimed at providing local emergency managers with the relevant content and opportunities to enhance their capabilities. Webinars are live for Q&A and are recorded for later viewing on the DEM website and YouTube channel. Most of these webinars are seminars or workshops with a hands-on portion, portion which will allow emergency managers to become oriented to the DEM process or test a DEM product. So our schedule today will be as follows. We will start with our ground rules and etiquette. Next, we'll have a brief presentation by Kathy Holder and Ember Herrick on I wonder what the post wildfire team does. Following the presentation, there will be a hands-on portion where participants will be encouraged to test out the product or process that was presented. Following the hands-on portion of our program, the presenters will be available for a Q&A session. Following the Q&A, we will close with a short message about upcoming webinars. Uh, the ground rules for today are fairly simple. Well, please, I ask that you please mute your line while the presenter is presenting. If you have a question, you may type it into the group chat or unmute at the appropriate time to ask your question. The session is being recorded and will be available on our website for future viewing. Thank you for your attendance today. With that, I'm gonna turn the time over to Kat and Ember. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. We'll get going. So just as a way of introductions, my name is Kathy Holder. I am the State Hazard Mitigation Officer and also the Post Wildfire Team Lead for this year at Division of Emergency Management. And we have Ember Herrick here. I don't know if she wants to say hello for a minute. Um, and she, I will let her introduce herself and her position. So I'm the state's public assistance officer and the FMAG lead, which those are fire mitigation assistant grants for the state of Utah and the Division of Emergency Management. Thanks, Amber. So uh, as you can see on this slide, we are your best post-wildfire connection for your communities. We'll talk about this post-wildfire team just a bit here. So the intent of the post-wildfire team was to bring awareness of the recent fires uh, that were happening in Utah, and then to bring together a team of professionals from state and federal and uh, our emergency manager individuals at DEM to help our communities and our citizens to better recover from a wildfire and look at their post hazard mitigation issues from a wildfire perspective and see what they could do. So some of our partners and this list is ever growing and changing. You can see on this slide here. Uh, as I said, we have the Utah Division of Emergency Management, which Ember and I work for. Um, we have a lot of individuals from our team. We have liaisons, our risk map manager, our floodplain manager, because we know there is a big risk of flooding after fire. And then we have all these other great resources and also on the federal side. So something that you may see from us as a post-wildfire team, um, if you hadn't noticed before about our team, you may get a contact email that talks about what our role is and shows you our wildfire.utah.gov uh, website where you can go to get information about the post wildfire team and its members and what we can do. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sampling right now of what we do in our community meetings. Um, so we have a couple of things that we can come out to you for. We can just advise the community officials and the emergency manager uh, from our different team members all in a one-stop shop, which I like to call it, of um, so they don't have to go shopping around for all our different partners. We can all meet in a meeting together with those community officials, with the emergency manager, and help them know what resources we bring to the table, what resources we can suggest for the community members, 
And then we can do a community meeting where you can invite all your community members that are affected or that would like to come. And these are some of the resources I'm going to show you that we bring to the table in those meetings. Um, so we, we talk about how this happens. We have the fire. Uh, it comes and it burns up, up the vegetation. Then you, you get that charred vegetation and the landscape that becomes um, more hard. And one, one person described it to me this way because to kind of help me because I, I'm not an engineer and I'm not a firefighter or a hydrologist. They, it's like the land gets baked. Um, on a fire. And then depending on how bad that severity of that burn scar is, it is going to uh, have different amounts of water that can come in to the land source or how hard it is that it can't get in. So it's like baking uh, something in a kiln and how the water would just run off that if, if you baked something in a kiln and, and it doesn't go absorb into the land anymore. And with that, then we get the flash flood possibilities in those burn scars. Uh, we also have erosion issues that can come about. And then of course, we have to deal with the debris flows that may happen in those instances. And then we have to look at water quality as well because that can also change. So one of our partners that we have is the Forest Service. And of course they bring the burn scar, burn area reports um, and all of those different things that they can do um, are in the bear reports uh, to the table. And then they talk about the mitigation measures that they can take. And they can only do those measures on federal lands in the Federal Forest Service lands. Uh, we also bring in NRCS, which they have some programs. They have the Emergency Watershed Program, Watershed and Flood Prevention Program, and they have Environmental Quality Incentive Programs that they can bring to the table and share with you. Then our partner of the National Weather Service, and they uh, participate on the bear team as well. And they have a hydrologist and others that can put out flash flood warnings and uh, give special places for the communities to look at, look to uh, for those warnings when they need to maybe do some special actions in those events. And they can also bring out a weather station and place it in the area if that's something that is needed. Um, and we partner with them as Division of Emergency Management. We have helped fund through FEMA funds uh, uh, several of these weather stations. Then we also have the Community Wildfire Planning and Future Risk Reductions. So they can do, uh, Julie can do a lot of helps with what they can do uh, after the fire a bit, but a lot before the next fire happens as well. And then we also have Richard Gerard who comes in with, with Utah Geological Services. And there are a lot of different things that he can do as well. So some of the other information that we from emergency management share is some resources that the citizens can do for themselves, how they can prepare their house, um, developing that emergency plan, things that they can do to make themselves safer before a flood. So we share some of those. Then we also share the, the items that they would do during a flood uh, to keep themselves safe and, and handle those things. We also share, okay, what do you have to do after a flood? What are some of those key pieces that you need to do? And so we kind of put it back into the citizens' hands after our, our other partners who have items that they can help with. Um, then we put it back into the citizens' hands of these are the things you can do because ultimately your home is your responsibility. Your property is your responsibility. How can we help you prepare and what can you do to be ready? Then we also have a portion where our floodplain manager talks about the exception that can come into play um, post wildfire and going through this just a little bit in case you don't know for your community is if there is a wildfire and it um, has been on federal lands and flooding comes off the federal lands, then there's normally a 30 day waiting period for a, a policy for a flood insurance policy. But with this exception, there are, there are a few things that can, ha can happen. And if they happen, they can have that exception waived at the time of adjustment. 
So they would go ahead and buy the policy with that 30 day waiting period there. But if it meets all of these qualifications, then that can be exception can be handled and that can take the 30 day waiting period away at the time of adjustment. We also have this flood after fire toolkit that comes from our floodplain program as well and from FEMA. And the flood after fire toolkit is a great place um, to go for information to give uh, even press releases or different items out to the community to help them. And I'm going to show you an example of one that happened on the Knowles fire. I, well, nope, it was the Ether Hollow fire. Um, so on the Ether Hollow fire, they took a pieces of the, that flood after fire toolkit and they they took these little thing banners and made them up and put them out. They put them out on social media as well. And then they made up a sign where the citizens could come by and scan that were in that area for a post wildfire community meeting, which we brought to the citizens. And so they had that opportunity. They had these posted all around the community and especially in those areas where there was a burn scar. And this is, was the emergency manager took all these pieces of information in that flood after fire toolkit and moved it a step further. I find this a very good best practice that communities could use and they can use all this information on their websites as well. Um, and they also put up, there, there are a lot more banners and things that you can do and raises the awareness of that flood after fire risk after post wildfire. Another service we have is our risk map manager and her staff can also overlay on the burned area scar. Uh, they can overlay where the floodplain is and they can also overlay where all the little, uh, where the creeks and the water sources may be. So that may be an extra area of where risk can be. Uh, one of our other partners that we often uh, go to that help out with other things is the Army Corps of Engineers. And I don't have a slide for them, but they have come in like on the example of that last fire and actually pulled the H&H uh, &H studies from, that they did on for the bear team down into the community level because they stop, the bear team stops at the forest service area lines and the federal land lines. And sometimes that information needs to be brought down further. So there's also a program for that, depending on how severe the, the burn scar is and, and what will happen with that. We have our partners at uh, USGS, and we also have our partners at WRI and WDWR from the, and DNR, where they can come in and do some seeding projects that can help post wildfire as well. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Ember and stop sharing here. And she's going to talk about what's available on our post wildfire resources. I'm really excited to talk about this today. Um, we've worked really hard with our partners, Utah State University, their extension service, um, to be able to create this post wildfire website. And um, it will be continually updated, um, but I'll show you what we have so far. So. Um, when you go to wildfire.utah.gov, you will see a bunch of resources and a little description about the, the team and what services they can provide for you. And then up in the corner is the request to community meeting link. So if you guys go to the chat, bring that up, and I put the link in there so you could just go directly to it. I'd like you to just practice filling that out. So um, the wildfire team, like Kat described, is comprised of state federal agencies. And what we do is we'll come into the community and we'll help you, but every community's needs are different because every wildfire is a little different. So by filling out this meeting request, we can tailor our community meetings to exactly what you need and what's most affecting your community. So you'll just put in some basic information if you've gone to the link, um, you'll tell them whether or not you want a meeting for just the community leaders, like your city council and your emergency managers, where we can just do a high level meeting and talk about your concerns. And then after that, often um, you also want a community meeting, which would be usually in the evenings. We had one for the Pat Creek fire um, this week, um, where we actually went down to San Juan County, it was virtual and in person, we were able to meet with um, members of the community that were concerned about that fire earlier this season and address some of their concerns. Um, so one of the things that they're worried about down there is drinking water and how their water supply might be affected 
um, by burn scar runoff following this wildfire. And so we were able to talk to them a little bit about that. And so at the last question, if you're doing the survey, ask you like what specifically affects your community. So you could just make it up or you can, um, if you've had a recent fire, you can talk about um, the issues that affected your community and just practice filling this out. So we try to make it as easy as possible um, to let us know that you've had a wildfire and you need the team's help. Also, um, a cool feature that is specific to the Post Wildfire website, um, we partnered with Forestry Fire and State Lands, and they have created a fire map tool. And this will allow um, any community in Utah to get on and see what your wildfire risk is. So it has all historic fires in Utah. So you can go back and see um, for many years what wildfires have occurred in your area. It tells you um, how big they were, what year they occurred. Um, it's all fires over 10 acres. And it also talks about land ownership. So you can see if it was mostly federal or state land and how long the fire burned. Um, so this kind of helps you as you do your community planning to know um, which areas are prone to wildfire and then to work with the state and these um, wildfire team agencies to come up with mitigation projects that will help you address that um, wildfire risk. So this tool is pretty cool and new to the website. Um, there's also a feature about how to mobilize your community. So if this is your first wildfire, or if you're a new emergency manager, you may be a bit overwhelmed when an event like this hits and it's very localized and serious, um, but the whole state isn't impacted by it. It's just maybe your small rural community. So we have some great resources and suggestions on how you can um, communicate effectively with your community and get them involved, um, resources, um, and also suggestions with working with volunteers so that you make sure you as the community leaders or the emergency manager maintain a management of the disaster and it isn't you know, taken over by um, volunteers that might be well-meaning, um, but need to work within the confines that you've set up for your community to address the post-wildfire hazards. Um, there's also a great feature on the website where you can meet the team. Um, there's a link to all of these different entities that Kat talked about, all their websites with their contact information, um, because these positions do change over time. So it'll help you no matter when your wildfire happens, if it happens this summer or if it happens five summers from now, you'll be able to go to this page and get the latest resources. A lot of times when we come and do these community meetings and talk to you, it's kind of a information overload. And so the purpose of putting the, the bios up for the team is to help you to say, okay, I remember in the meeting that Julie came from Forest Year Friends State Lands and she talked about what she could do to help us, but I can't remember exactly which programs. So you'd be able to click on Julie's um, video and she can talk a little bit about what she's able to do. And so we're just going to watch a portion of that for just a second so you can get an idea about um, what these videos look like. We wanted to make them just as, as short and concise as possible, just two to five minutes where each agency talks about um, what they can do to help and support you and what resources they provide um, through their agency to help Utah communities post wildfire. So let's watch this for just a minute. Of that. So we want to help your community in the rehabilitation process and to create resilient landscapes to help it become more fire adapted and to prepare for fire if it comes around again. We prioritize areas that have the highest risk and that's where we do most of our mitigation actions. One of our most successful funding activities through the CAT Fire strategy has been community chipping and engagement events. We encourage homeowners to create defensible space. We can do lot assessments for them so they know what that entails and they can remove debris, brush, anything that's extra vegetation. We encourage them to bring that out to the curb, create piles, and then after that we come through with a chipper and it comes and mulches up all that material and piles it. We can pull it away and sometimes we just spread it out and they can use it as mulch. But that engages our communities at the local level, individual residential level to empower themselves. We can help your community on all levels of fire management. We do pre-fire suppression activities, which are prevention 
preparedness mitigation. We support Firewise USA, Ready, Set, Go, and Fire Adapted Communities, and we can help you in your community understand what those programs are and how they can help you. Through our Cooperative Wildfire System, or CWS, all counties are participating, and most municipalities throughout the state. They are responsible for prevention, preparedness, and mitigation within their jurisdiction, depending on their local wildfire risk. We are responsible for all the wildfire suppression on state and private lands. Through our wildfire policy, local fire departments are responsible for their own initial attack to fires. So they're the first responders. If that fire becomes above what they can control, the state will cover all costs of a fire beyond the initial attack. After a fire, we are here for you. We have area managers, county fire wardens, the Wildland Urban Interface staff. We can all help direct you to the right pots of money to do rehabilitation efforts. We can offer technical assistance in knowing what would be the best thing for the landscape if a fire were to reoccur. We want to be here for you through the, all of the phases of fire, pre-fire, fire management and suppression, and post-fire. So please reach out to us to help get your communities back on their feet. I love that video because it shows exactly what that agency does. You could go back and watch it at any time and um, see what forestry and fire state lands can do. So we've got 10 of those um, from each of the agencies just with a brief description. So just wanted to make you aware that that's out there. So if you're overwhelmed after the, the initial community meeting, um, you can still um, go back and watch these at any time and remember what um, these different agencies are able to help you with. So there's also resources. Kat talked about the Flood After Fire um, Toolkit. There's a ton of resources um, for your community that we've compiled from all these different agencies on the resources page um, that can be really useful after a fire. There's also treatments and mitigation. Um, so there's everything from before a fire, coordination, suppression during the fire, and then recovery and restoration and future mitigation. Um, there's also water restoration links and then mitigation projects. Um, here's a good example at the bottom of your screen. It shows the North Ogden Debris Basin. Um, this is a huge debris basin that was um, funded with FEMA federal money. Um, I'm to yes? I, I'm not sure we're seeing the same thing you think we are. Okay. Should be the post wildfire treatments and mitigation. Let me try again. Sorry. So the debris basin um, is a good example of uh, a project where a community was worried about um, fire, flood after fire, and so they created this this huge debris basin to catch any debris that came off of the mountain. Can you see it now? Yes. Awesome. So as you can see, um, I'm at the top looking down from the ravine where they were worried about um, flood after fire. And they've got this amazing feature in place. You can see all the homes below it that would have been impacted by a flood after fire event. So um, these are great projects that you can do in your community with these post-hazard mitigation funds. Um, help make your community more resilient and um, we also have great links for financial assistance, um, tips for individuals, as well as um, resources for the community. So it's a good place to send. A lot of times people will come to these community meetings and they're upset. They want to know what they can do. They're worried about their homes. Where can they get sandbags? So um, these are some great resources on the website for where you can send um, your homeowners and things they can do to empower and protect their own personal property and then things you and resources um, that are available to you as a community. And finally, um, we'd just like to answer any questions that you may have about the Pulse Wildfire website or the Pulse Wildfire team. Um, we're really excited to have a one-stop shop where everybody can come and get information in one place. Um, the Pulse Wildfire team came about because you know different agencies were getting called and they were going out to help different communities 
and they weren't necessarily coordinating or, or talking with other agencies um, about what resources they had available. And so the great part and what has been so rewarding about working with this team over the past two years and watching it grow and now seeing the website launch this year is I feel like as a state, Utah is becoming more resilient and we have these amazing tools in place now so that after community experiences a wildfire, they have a one-stop shop where they can go to get consistent information, to get help from the entire team, to request a community meeting, to get resources. And we are improving this and adding new resources all the time as new information becomes available. Another thing that's exciting is we're going to do some brochures that you can download from the Pulse Wildfire website or um, when the Pulse Wildfire team comes, they'll also have them like in physical form that you can hand out. Um, so it'll be resources like a door hanger where you can print them off and put them um, on homes that are at risk to let them know about getting NFIP insurance or about the community meeting that's coming up. Um, about how to ask their insurance provider about information about flood insurance um, and also some other great brochures about the team just so that you can take a little summary with your community to know who you need to reach out to depending on how the wildfires affected you. So I'm really grateful for Utah State. They've been a great partner to work with the Extension Service and all of our um, post wildfire team and we hope this is a valuable resource for you as emergency managers. And we'd just like to entertain any questions you may have about the team or the website at this time. Do we have any questions? If you do think of questions later, there's our contact information, but you could always use the Utah DM recovery at gmail.com. And if you ever need to get a hold of the lead for the Pulse Wildfire team, that number has been set up specifically for the lead it will go directly to them even if it's on a weekend so you can get help and assistance um, whenever the wildfire um, affects your community so i have a question for our group if they don't have any questions um my question is so where are you going to go for your best post wildfire connection you too cricket <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, that was some great information, good stuff that I even learned, so lots of good stuff. Um, again, one more time, does anybody have any questions? You can unmute or you can put it in the chat. Okay. Well, with that, thanks, Kat and Ember, for your presentation today. Um, as a reminder for everyone, this webinar and all other webinars in this series will be available on the DEM website at dem.utah.gov slash exercises or now at dem.utah.gov slash I wonder. The next webinar will be on July 29th. John Cross will be presenting and his topic will focus on unreinforced masonry or masonry building. If you have any I wonder topics suggestions, please reach out to Jeff Frankham at utah.gov to have your topics added to our calendar. We're always excited to help you explore and get to know all that DEM can offer the emergency management community. Until then, keep wondering.